that is a big pile of silver. That is awesome. Hey everybody, this is James and you're watching my channel, Catroll Hunter. And in this little envelope, we have some chunky Canadian silver. There is a big old silver dollar here. This is perhaps my biggest junk silver or scrap silver purchase ever. And these are some big scrap silver coins too. This is going to be pretty awesome. I'm pretty excited about it. what I think we'll do because it's always fun to hear that sound of silver. And we've got some chunky silver in here. I'm going to pick this up. We're going to dump it out and we're going to see what we've got. All right, there is a lot of good stuff. Big chunky silver in here, if you can see in that bag. And I'm just going to dump it out and we're going to see what we've got in here. I'm gonna have to find the stuff I lost. A couple landed in my lap here, one down here. I saw one roll off the side of the desk. I'd better go collect some before I lose any. But that is a big pile of silver. That is awesome. Well, I think I got everything. I might not be surprised if I find a silver quarter or something on the floor later, but I'll find it eventually. Anyhow, I got a big pile of silver here. And I've been able to get silver at a great price. I paid 15 times face for this silver here. And there is some big chunky stuff. Now this is definitely, as you can see here, this is what we would call junk silver, scrap silver. It's These are not coins in great uh, numismatic shape or without don't have a lot of great numismatic value, I should say. Some of them are probably in decent condition except for the tarnishing and toning. That's because these are probably not been stored very well and have been subject to the elements. But I paid 15 times face for this. That's always a great price for 80% Canadian silver. And that's what we have here with the exception of this guy. I'm gonna throw this off to the side for now because this one is very interesting. It's a love token. We'll look at this one later. I think what I need to do though is separate out everything we have here. Most of this is silver dollars and most of this is also 80%. I think there might be something in here that is 50% Canadian silver and there are, as you can see, some dimes and a couple quarters in that. So I'm going to separate this out. We'll take a peek and see what this all breaks down as. So we ended up with $1.90 in dimes and quarters and our oldest coin here is a 1941 King George the sixth dime that's cool we got a 1953 that's a first year Queen Elizabeth the second we got a 1967 uh, confederation commemorative and this one is a 1968 and you can't even really make it out here because of the tarnishing and who knows this coin is probably actually in decent shape you can actually see it is you know below the tarnishing but it's been subject to environment and probably poor storage. I'll put it under the scope here and we can confirm that is in fact a 1968. So a 1968 is actually 50% silver. Um, 1967 was a transition year. So some of the 67s were 50% silver. Some of them were 80% silver. We can't really easily tell the difference between them unless we had like a specialty instrument. The specifications are exactly the same. The weight, the diameter, all of that, they're exactly the same for the 50 and 80%. So you can't really easily tell. Some people say they can tell by the sound. I can't do that. If you can, good for you. For me, I can't do that. But they don't typically trade at the same value as 80 percenters because people can't discern them and dealers aren't going to take the time to check them. So they normally trade at uh, as though they're 65%, sort of between 80 and 50, all of them. But for the 67s and the 68s, I actually just paid 10 times face. So I got a great deal on that. 15 times face for the 80%, 10 times face for the stuff that we can't tell, and for the 40%. In the quarter, 50%, sorry. In the quarters, we got this guy here he is a 1963. So that's their oldest quarter. We got three of those Bobcats, the Centennial of uh, Confederation. And we got a couple of 1968s, not uh, in great shape necessarily, but definitely some toning on some of these guys. So I don't know where they were stored for all these years, but this is 
oxidation. This is being uh, subject to environmental conditions. So that's just the way it is. But it is in my collection now, so that's really cool. I'm gonna sweep that stuff aside and make some space for all this stuff. We'll sort through and see what we've got. I can see at least one King George VI. That's really cool. I don't know if there's any more, but we'll find out in a moment. We ended up with a big stack of Canadian silver dollars. We got 32 in total. Most of them, almost all of them, all but one of them, are Queen Elizabeth II. And one was just the lone soul King George VI. That's a 1951. And it's actually in really nice condition. You can see, I mean, these coins didn't really circulate much. So lots of detail. It's got that toning and tarnishing, but otherwise it is a uh, pretty uncirculated coin, I would say. So in a mint state, and many of these might be, it's just hard to say or hard to tell because of the, the environmental damage or the toning on them. And some of them, this one looks like it's got some residue or something on it. I can't quite tell for sure, but they're not going to fetch a premium for being mint state or uncirculated coins when they don't look so shiny and bright. That's why they're in the junk silver bin, essentially. But in the 1950s, there are a number of different varieties we can look for, and they're mostly around the water lines. And so there are little water lines on both sides of this canoe here. And some of the varieties have full water lines that extend all the way from the edge of the canoe to the rim of the coin, and others have fewer water lines. We'll take a look at this one and see what it is. This is a 1951. I'll throw it up on the big screen here. All right, there is a good look. This might be considered full water lines. There's four water lines that extend, and this these ones are almost right to the edge of the canoe. And what happened was that as the dyes were polished over time, the lines lost their definition. So other versions, the short water lines, wouldn't have been touching the edge of the canoe. And there's another variety really interestingly called Arnprior. And they're just maybe one and a half or two and a half water lines. And the name came about because in 1955, the Royal Canadian Mint fulfilled an order for a firm in the town of Arnprior, Ontario for 2,000 of these coins. And collectors noted that these coins did not have the full water lines. So that's where the term Arnprior originated. That term now is really used to apply across any of these years in the 50s, even before 1955, where there are these variations because of that dye polishing. Now, if you want to learn more about Arnprior coins or these var varieties, I would highly recommend getting the Charlton Standard Catalog of Canadian Coins. They are a sponsor of the channel. You can use my discount code CRH20 for 20% off your order. You can see here on this page, they show some images of the water lines, the Arn Prior at the right, the full water lines at the left. And you'll see on the price chart, there isn't a significant premium for any of them. But if you like to collect varieties, then it's really interesting to know what to look for and make sure you've got all of those little holes in your collection filled. But anyway, so you can use that discount code CRH20 for the Charlton Press website. I've got the link below. You'll get 20% off your order. You can also use that at Lighthouse Canada. They're also a sponsor of the channel as well as their other brand, Leuchtturm Optic. All of the links are below in the same code CRH20 works. So check it out. This is an indispensable guide. Lots of interesting facts about coins. If you want to learn more about the varieties, more about the history associated with the coins, you'll find that in here. I should mention that some of these coins would be considered relatively low mint coins. This 1951, for instance, is minted at just 416,000. But some of the coins in the 40s are even harder to come by and rarer than that. 1948 is considered to be the holy grail of Canadian silver dollars, and it's minted at just over 18,000. So we didn't get anything quite that rare here, but even at under half a million, this one here, this 51, is pretty uh, low mint. While we only had one 1951, we were only going to get one of those varieties. In the 1953 here, we actually have, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of them, which means there's a really good chance we might get more than one variety. So not only are there waterline varieties in the 1953, there's also the shoulder fold and no shoulder fold variety. We see these in other 1953s as well. Those all have to do with the 
portrait of the queen on the obverse. So we'll take a look and see what we've got. First of all, with the shorter, with the shoulder fold is a hard, hard thing to say. And, uh, and then we'll look at uh, the water lines. So here is one of those 1953s and you can clearly see the shoulder fold. It's really like the strap of the dress um, on here. And in relatively uncirculated coins like this, this is really easy to spot. The other thing that we tend to rely on when we're looking at Canadian coins that are more circulated is that the font is a bit different. The shoulder fold has a slimmer design, whereas the no shoulder fold uses more of a flared serif font. So this here is a shoulder fold. If we flip it over, we'll look at those water lines and see that this might be full water lines. It looks like they're pretty close to the edge of the canoe, I'd say so. So that's a shoulder fold, full water line. I'll look through the rest and see if we have any of the other varieties. I'll bring you back in if any of them differ. If they're all the same, we'll move on to the next year. Well, very next coin and it looks like you might be able to see a little bit of something here, but this is a no shoulder fold. And I can tell that because when I look at the eye above, it is a very flared font, very different than the other one we saw. And I'll put it right here so we can see them side by side. You can see, or top and bottom, the eye on the bottom isn't as flared at the top and bottom as this one here. It's sort of thicker and more flared. And the other letters, also exhibit more flaring at the ends as well. You can see the point of that E versus this is rather blunt. And when I flip this one over, this looks like it's probably gonna be that short water line. These water lines here don't extend all the way to the canoe. Now, this is like a scale, of course, because it's not like there's a certain percentage that are full and a certain percentage that are short and a certain percentage that might be considered arm prior. The truth is that these dies were polished over time and the more they were polished, the less defined these lines became. So you might find some that just vary somewhat from another and you just have to decide, does this look like full? Does this look like short? Does this look like iron prior? It's a little bit arbitrary. We're getting a nice mix here. Here's another 1953. It is a no shoulder fold when we take a look at it. It is definitely the short water lines variety. So really cool. If you get a bunch of these to look through, maybe you can fill some holes in your collection and collect the different varieties if you're fortunate to come across a bunch like this. Here's a 1954, one of the two we got. This might be considered full water lines if I just slide over the next coin. This one here is very definitely the short water line. So that's very cool that we got both varieties in the 1954. Really cool. We got two 1957s and these both feature the full water lines. Next up is the 1958. We got a good little stack here. We got 11 of these ones. This is probably the nicest example from the pile. This is commemorating 100 years since the founding of British Columbia as a crown colony. It features a totem pole and it's been dubbed the death dollar because it features the figure of a raven on the totem pole which was symbolizing death in native culture. So death dollar is what this one is known as, a very beautiful coin. There are no varieties to speak of on this one, uh, but we got 11 to add to our silver stack, pretty cool. Rounding things off here, we got six 1959s and we got three 1960s. And then we have one more little goodie to look at and that's this one over here. So this one is unlike the others. This is not a Canadian silver dollar. This is something different altogether, but this is likely silver. And you can see this etched design in here is just gorgeous. The initials are either WS or MS, depending on which way you orient this. I'm gonna suspect that it goes this way because it's got a hole in it, it would have been uh, used as a necklace, but when I flip it over, check it out. It is a United States Morgan dollar. We will never know what year it was because here we have where the date would be. It is gone. We can maybe see the top of the one, but the rest of the date is obliterated. It looks like this might have been a pin at some time and then maybe also a necklace at some time. So it might have been serving double duty. 
Um, but we're not going to be able to see the mint mark, which would be on the reverse, which would be somewhere over here. We're not going to be able to see the date, which would be at the bottom here. So we've got ourselves a Morgan dollar love token, and it's pretty tarnished. It's very dark, but that is just a beautiful piece of art made from a coin. Pretty awesome. One of the things I'm going to do now and I do after every time I get a junk silver purchase is I'm going to check my coin collection to see if these are going to fill any holes in the collection, particularly with some of the varieties that we've found here with the water lines. It's a good possibility. In fact, I already know I'm going to fill a hole. Here's my binder with my $1 coin starting in 1935. That was the first year. It was a commemorative uh, that featured King George V. That was the first year I've got one of those. And I've got them all through into the loonies. You can see there are a bunch of holes here. Some of these are pretty hard to come by and pretty low mint. 45, 47, 48 is a very valuable coin. I don't have a 1950. I don't have the 51 Arn Prior, the 52 No Water Lines variety, but I also don't have a 1953 No Shoulder Fold. And I know I do now because we got some Shoulder Fold and No Shoulder Fold. So I'm going to find the best of these. They're just junk silver, and until I get a better uncirculated version that looks nice and bright, I'm going to flip it up and put it right here in my collection and see if there are any others. Uh, the 1957, I have one here, but I didn't get one with the just one water line, so I don't think I'm going to fill a hole there. But it's always fun to see if you've got some varieties when you go through a purchase like this. I hope you really enjoyed this look at some Canadian scrap silver, mostly silver dollars, big chunky silver. That's pretty hefty stuff. If you did, please give the video a like, a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. That's a great way to support the channel. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, Cad Roll Hunter, you already got to the end of the video. Why don't you do that? Just hit the button, subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I always, always appreciate it. We'll see you again next time. The sponsors of today's video are Lighthouse Canada and the Charlton Press. Lighthouse Canada is the leading supplier of high quality numismatic supplies in Canada. And the Charlton Press is the leading publisher of coin and paper money catalogs and price guides for Canadian collectors. Go check out their online stores today and use the exclusive discount code CRH20 for 20% off all your purchases.